that he will be showing some slides on a PowerPoint as part of the discussion today. Um, but the discussion will focus on his most recent work, uh, a mask called Zelal Dinas. And uh, because of the unusual uh, structure, the unusual form that he's chosen, as well as perhaps the slightly unusual form of the name, though the name is one that belongs to someone who's, uh, whom you will instantly recognize, the Mughal Emperor Akbar. Uh, I think I'd like to begin, Alan, if you permit, by uh, asking you a little bit about this book, and then perhaps after that you can uh, speak to your slides or answer. Okay, you're right. Well, first of all, the puzzle of Zelal Dinus. Okay, it's spelled Z-E-L-A-L-D-I-N-U-S. Uh, it is simply a Latinized form of Jalaluddin. Okay, and the reason is, uh, I think I better show you a slide. Uh, has something come up? Okay, well, there are a couple of, there are three images that we'll go through very quickly. When I first thought of this as a book, this was the man with his back to us, and this is actually a contemporary pencil drawing, a beautiful one. I'm sorry about the bad reproduction, but this is what I hoped would be the cover. Uh, could we have the next one? This is the man himself, and then the very next one, this is what we got. So this is what I'm going to be reading from. And uh, I immediately said, yes, because the artist had got the idea. I mean, you can see the Nikes, and you can see the boom box, and right. Yeah. So uh, it's Akbar set now, okay? Not Akbar then. And I'll read you one line which will explain the Latinizing. Um, can, we, can we move to the next one? Okay. This, on the left-hand side, the extreme left there, is the man who uh, wrote letters to Rome. That is Father Antonio Montserrat. And he was reporting. He, he had been called to Fatehpur Sikri by Akbar. And uh, he was reporting every month or so letters written in Latin to Rome. And he couldn't say Jalaluddin. And so it became Zelaldinus. And the name appealed to me. And so it stuck. So. Uh, Here is Father Antonio Montserrat writing to Rome. While Zelaldinus was residing at Agra, he decided to remove his court to Sikri in accordance with the advice of a certain philosopher who was then living in a small hut on this hill. Now the hill is, uh, people here have been to Fatehpur Sikri, show of hands. Ah, oh, wonderful, oh, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Okay, so uh, for those who, of you who haven't, you have to imagine a chain of red hills, okay? I don't know how to do this. Maybe I should, shall I go up to the, uh, what do you need to, do? Uh, to, to that mic? Is that all right? Uh, yes, sure, okay. if, uh, if, if it helps, yes. Yeah. Is this one on? with the advice of a certain philosopher who was then living in a small hut on this hill. And the next poem is called The Saint. Some of you will know who the saint was. Salim Chishti. Right, yes. The Saint. Saint, not philosopher. Get it right. And small hut? It's not that small. Anyway, whose advice? Not mine. I just bespoke him a son, and he took it for sooth, and went home and did his tilth. And lo, one came along, God help us. So, he sends his missus, and the sprog named for me, huh? the baby was named Salim after the saint, named for me to keep me company, me company. 
And the next poem. I don't want, I, we haven't got very much time, but uh, what? The saint before Akbar. Rock. This is that chain of red hills. Rock. No whale. Hill. Bear, but for hut. Cloud, going from crocodile, no, going from long to short to two. Man on red rock, shaded by cloud, all you can say. But days too, I sit on a red cloud and stupendous white millstones grind overhead. To tell the truth, I, desert saint, sick of speech, came here to avoid a plague of snails in one vet valley. There are them. Snails as big as dogs, small dogs. Vile crunch underfoot, up every alley, in every cot. Me asking, have I sinned or what? Then, look what happens. I fall in love with a hill with its dry silence, with the sound of rock splitting, the tumbling green bee eaters, twisted thorn trees, even the scorpions scuttling. You just have to be careful. The heat, well, yes. Then November nights steal up on you. I'm given a shawl. A widow offers six almonds. The sound of my voice pleasant to me again, as shepherd Hui. It rains here too, short rains, thunder showers that sweep by and leave the whole hill gasping. All night the suck of countless rock mouths under the old thatched stars. Solitude? Or no, a saint, like his majesty, is at a loss. So let me toss this small pierced coin. He tosses. Tails. Company. Damn. Well then, one city, no more, no less. And the building of Fatipur Sikri commences. Could we have the next slide? Okay. That is Akbar at the building of the city. And uh, now you will hear for the first time his voice. Aphorisms of the king. Look, just go conquer sin. I can't be everywhere at once. I'll dismember the man who slanders my saint with my bare hands. That line about redemption, run it past me again, Father, what's your name? This is one country, mine. Mr. Ambassador, you tell your king our painters gild the sun. And our singer guides the moon. The singer was Dan Sen. Yes. Now, who's for a game of Tag the Leopard? Akbar was a, a very complex man. He took all sorts of risks while hunting. And once gored in the thigh by a, a, a wild boar. My super subtle finance minister just Close down the royal mint for a decade. Simple. You can imagine Arun Shuri trembling. Huh? I've been thinking, if we ratchet up the pinwheel, we lift the water twice as fast. He was const a restless man, always trying to invent things. And he, he would join a group of builders if they were building 
if there were armorers cleaning guns, he would go in and help there. So here he's trying to figure out how to lift water onto Fatipur Sikri Hill. And as you know, the city was abandoned after 10 years because they ran out of water. Yeah, crucial. Hmm. You feel sorry for meat eaters lining their stomachs with souls. Akbar was a vegetarian. But what of us? Deaf to the cauliflower's cry? One more thing. If all faiths are equally true, does it follow that all are equally false? We'll put the books here, next to the armor. Akbar was illiterate. He had great respect for books. But the reason was that while his father was on the run, he had lost the throne in Delhi. He was in Afghanistan. Those were the days of Akbar's childhood, when he should have been at school. So then. I'll marry her, and her, and her. He had 300 wives. Yeah. Chamberlain, this pillow's soft. There's a poem here called Heart Ravishing Sayings of his Majesty. Heart ravishing because it's written by, in the, by Abul Fazl, who uh, was Akbar's prime minister and also biographer, uh, wrote the history of, uh, he wrote the Akbar Nama, right? A great flatterer. So in this book, he becomes a, a sort of comical figure. But these, these are aphorisms written by him. Uh, heart ravishing sayings of His Majesty. Absolute zero is wider than true north by half. True north is farther than a neighbor's wife. A neighbor's ox eats twice the measure of thine own. East is east, but measure your bread by the baking stone. People in stone houses should not glaze to the south. The stolen mango is sweetest in a drought. East is south when the world leans on its elbow. The former light of the world got off his tiger. Ayo. You know the saying, he who rides the tiger should not get off. The paper dragon should beware the candle by the bed. In the country of the toothless is the best head. Better a stale fish fry than a bad guzzle. Conjec, this poet's a right pain in the abul fuzzle. And this last line is one of those jokes where you uh, you get the answer first, and then you get the question. OK? All right. So the answer you've got to bear in mind, all right? Keep this in your head, is neither can I. Ha ha. All right? And uh, you can add case dismissed. Neither can I. Ha ha. Case dismissed. OK, so here's the question. Majesty, she can't sleep with the light on. I can't read in the dark. Neither can I. <laughs> OK, so he can't read by day and he can't read by night. Huh? He can't read in the dark either. All right, so I'll, I'll leave it at that. I'll, I can come back with any more if we've got time. Uh, great. Uh, thank you very much, Alan. That was inspired. And I'd like to say that you know, you've got a taste of how wonderful this book is, full of intricate, uh, different w verse forms in the construction 
of what Alan calls a mask. Uh, I had a couple of uh, lines that I marked uh, because I wanted to read them out to you. This is a passage where, let me say a little bit about the structure of this mask. Uh, yes, it is about uh, Jalaluddin Akbar, the Mughal emperor, and the building of Fatehpur Sikri. Uh, it's also, of course, set in the present, where uh, the narrator, who is a man called Irving, uh, arrives at Fatehpur Sikri in a hot summer and goes up on the hill uh, to see the monuments. And he is accosted by a ghost, which is the ghost of the emperor. And he sees a succession of um, persons from the past. And these persons belong to the history of uh, the Mughal Empire, though not necessarily to Akbar's time, because Thomas Coriat, for example, makes an appearance in the pr uh, person of an English gentleman called Terence Golightly. But Thomas Coriat, of course, was at Jahangir's court, not at Akbar's. So there's a kind of conflation of different historical uh, he moments. He actually walked all the uh, yes, way from he walked England all the way, to India. Exactly. He walked. Uh, he walked all the way. For, he was, uh, there's a biography of him by Dom Moraes and um, Sarayu Srivastav called The Long Strider because he walked all the way from England to India and he died and of dysentery and was, is buried in Surat. The lines that I wanted to read to you are from the passage, the poem, uh, called The Ghost. Um, and this is really funny, but I'm particularly impressed with the, with the uh, movement of the, of the rhyme. And as the ectoplasm coalesces, as ectoplasm can, into neither palm nor camel, but pre-existent man, the air fair crackles in a, preter in a preternatural breeze, so squirrels freeze with upright hackles. So you have a kind of internal rhyme, crackles with hackles, and freeze with breeze, but it's sort of uh, you know, turned inside out. So I find a lot of this going on right through this, this, um, uh, this work. Uh, but what I'm particularly interested by is the fact that um, Alan Seeley's books all uh, have a kind of generic naming attached to them. Uh, Trotter Nama is a chronicle. Um, I think Everest Hotel is a calendar. Uh, um, Red is a diary, is that right? Or maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I forget. But anyway, it was an, uh, alphabet. Almanac, uh, an alphabet. An alphabet. Uh, then, um, and you know, uh, yes, so there's um, uh, from Yukon to Yucatan is a, that was a, 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 journey. a Western yeah. journey. And this work uh, is, uh, uh, is a, a, a fable, uh, sorry, a, a, a mask. So, in fact, actually have a list of, of these here. The small wild goose pagoda is an almanac. Red is an alphabet. The brain fever bird is an illusion and so on. So you have uh, a deliberate use of a genre uh, as part of the naming process. But at the same time, the work plays around with the genre. And obviously, it, isn't exactly, it doesn't exactly conform to the way in which we have been accustomed to think of that genre. However, in the case of this book, uh, Mask, I think there's a p peculiar appositeness uh, to calling it a mask, because as uh, you're aware, uh, Akbar, who was roughly a contemporary of um, Queen Elizabeth of Britain, uh, is uh, ruling at a time when the mask is growing to um, prominence as a very, very important court form in uh, Europe and in England particularly. Uh, Elizabeth herself wrote a letter to Akbar, which she uh, addressed to Zelabdim Ekebar. Again, a misspelling, Zelabdim Ekebar. Uh, she sent four or uh, five English traders to India to deliver her letter to Akbar at Agra. Uh, so I'd like to ask um, Alan a little more about the form of the mask and the way in which this mask form, which is, after all, a performance form, is being used in this uh, in this work. Yes, I did uh, envision it as a kind of performance because yeah. it, those of you who have been to Fatehpur Sikri will know that when you when you leave the Diwani Arm and you come into the Diwani Khas, uh, 
there is a broad stone terrace, red stone terrace with a, a checkered pattern there where Akbar used to play a kind of chess with human pieces. And uh, so the courtesans and, uh, uh, of his court would be dressed up in this sort of mask fashion, right? Uh, so it's a costume drama. And the, the whole point of, of that form is that it is a spectacle. It's something happening to entertain people, in this case, uh, people at the court. But I, in this book, I also wanted to give it a kind of uh, slightly more plebeian feel. And so there are sort of nautanki elements in there. It, 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 popular, it's, it's like a mela. So each of these poems, and it's a series of poems, right? It's set up uh, it, from one end to the other, a series of poems in different formats, different forms. And each of them is like a booth at a fair. So there's that element as well. You enjoy each one separately, and yet there's also a narrative thread that is connecting them, them all. Yeah. So it's like uh, a mela, as this is a mela. Uh, yes, exactly. as yeah. we are present yes. at well, a mela. There was and a session boots. before us. <laughs> exactly, yeah. and there will be a session afterwards. And there will afterwards. be another session completely will, different. Indeed. Following. Yeah. And there will be different voices speaking and different people speaking of different concerns. Here in this work, particularly, there's this enormous um, skill in juggling with history and with historical times because you have identified persons, the great, 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 whatever, grandson of the tiller of the soil who originally inhabited this land before Akbar came to Fatehpur Sikri, now working as a tourist guide and rattling off the names of the nine jewels of Akbar's court and so on to Danish tourists. And at the same time, you have the ghostly presence of Akbar himself with his more than human current um, you know, familiar who is Irving, uh, who is uh, speaking with him and uh, in taking a tour of Fatehpur Sikri with the best guide that there is. But the other question I'd like to ask you here, Alan, is a question about building. It seems to me that many of your works have incorporated a tremendous, very detailed interest in the building of something, the building of, and obviously, this could be analogous to the building of a literary work, that is to say, the architecture of the work itself. But in practical, physical terms also, you are very interested in building. Chotarnama begins with this enormous account of the building of, um, I think it's the Trotter home or whatever it, it is. is. It is, yes. 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 And it then is. there's a small wild go uh, goose pagoda where I think, Alan, you're talking about your own uh, experience of building. Yes. And then there's the building of Fatehpur Sikri. Well, I am a builder. It's, yes. I it's an addiction, right? Um, my guru uh, was a mystery. He taught me how to lay bricks. He taught me how to make concrete, uh, to cut stone, to cut iron. And these are my passions, right? So I'm, in fact, I'm going home from here to start straight away another piece. Uh, so this aspect of Akbar's own personality, where he could turn his hand to just about any art or science, in, including music, by the way. He played the, he played the drum. So uh, he was a man of many parts. And uh, I try to bring that out in, in here, yes. Yes, I, I wanted to read out this line, which is at the bottom of one of the poems, a uh, quotation from Fra Father Antonio Montserrat. Uh, Zelaldinus is so devoted to building that he sometimes quarries stone himself along with the other workmen, rather like Alan. <laughs> so um, you have uh, this account of an emperor who is, um, uh, who, who is also a builder, a builder of physical um, uh, objects as well as a builder of empires, a builder of stories, a builder of history or whatever, however you want to use this word building. Um, I, uh, I, I'm also very interested by the way in which Alan brings out how this moment in history is a moment where cultural currents are meeting and crossing 
in, uh, you know, in uh, where Akbar is. So you have the Jesuits anxious to convert Akbar to Roman Catholicism, and they think that they have uh, you know, a good thing on, but actually <laughs> Akbar is not at all likely to be converted. He's about there to create his own religion, <laughs> right? Exactly, he's about to create his own religion. You have others, you know, visitors, uh, the Englishmen, uh, who come a bit later, but you know, there is certainly um, leads and story, two of the Englishmen sent by Elizabeth, remained, stayed on in the emperor's court, Le leads as a uh, jeweler, I think, and story perhaps as a builder or something. So there are these people who are coming, visiting from all over the world, and there, there's an uh, unusually syncretic culture being formed there, and, just and as this, this is, is a syncretic work. Yes. This is consciously done by this man, this illiterate man, who is also a sovereign. So he can summon people, he can steal the best singer in the land, right? He can steal Tansen from a Raja in, in Gwalior. Uh, he can also send for uh, a priest. Those two priests that you saw, he, they were in Goa. He said, come, and they have to come. Uh, uh, so, and why is he calling them? Because he is also called a Jain. He is also call, uh, called a Hindu. And he is curious, intellectually curious himself, but he also has a vision of an empire that is as complex as his own brain. And uh, in fact, there is, can we move to the next slide? Is, is there somebody uh, yes. uh, operating? Yeah. Could we have the next slide, the please? The next slide, please. Ah, OK. Yeah. And that syn syncretism yes. that Supriya is talking about, yes. uh, is beautifully summed up in this coin, right? This is a silver rupiah struck by an Islamic sovereign. It has an Islamic text on one side and it has Ram and Sita on the other side. Yes. Um, I'd like to ask you, um, you know, about where this um, writing progress, uh, and here again, I'm consciously using the word progress, like the progresses of Elizabeth, like the pageant of work that you've sh yes. put before us in your writing, where this is taking you. Here is a work that is written entirely in verse. Um, there is a story in it, because there's also a kind of romance, a, a person called Percival, who, uh, you know, who has a romantic attachment across the current border with Pakistan, and he is assisted by Akbar uh, to achieve, um, you know, to, to get across the border. I can read you one, uh, yes. Why don't one you more poem, yes. and then, uh, yeah, I don't know how much time we've got left. Yeah. Okay. This one is called The Ghost Walks. W what happens is that uh, in summer, uh, Erwin falls out with Akbar. They have a quarrel and so he runs away. And then in winter, he comes back. Can we have the poem or not? Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, race through it. Um, Irv, you're back. Majesty, I couldn't keep away. Count your blessings, Irv. I can't bear to stay. I just overheard my saint beg to be re-embodied and thought, yes. Listen, you're a storyteller. You can embody me. I'm sorry I was rude about your profession. Embody me, walk me away. I've been too long on this hill. There is a remedy, Majesty, but it's worse than the disease, or more final. Nothing could be worse, Irv. You'll have to do as I say, Your Highness, the way my characters do. Done, says Zelaldinus. It's not just your characters that obey you when you write novels, Majesty. The whole world does. In that sense, begging your pardon, I'm a more absolute monarch than you. Ahem, says Zelaldinus. A mountain 
is, when I say so on the page, Majesty. A gun goes off when I pull a trigger that wasn't there before. Uh, remember, I can't write. Narrate then, declare, command, say, leaves appear on this bare branch. That smacks of heresy, huh? It's the only way out of here, if you really want that. More than anything, Irv. Story yourself out, then. Say, Zelaldinus walks down the Sikri road. Are you sure about this? I won't be struck down. OK. Zelaldinus walks down the Sikri road. What's this? What's happening to me? You're walking down the Sikri road, like you said. I can't go like this, Irv. I'm, I'm not dressed for one. And I need ostriches and eunuchs and things. Create them. But then you'd be back where you started. This is something you have to do alone, Majesty. Stop me, Irv. Stop yourself. Say, Akbar halts. Akbar halts, Akbar halts, Akbar halts. Just the once. You've stopped. Have I? Why, yes, I have. Akbar returns then. There, you've got the hang of it. Look, Irv. Can't you embody me in one of your stories? What sort of story? Oh, passion, romance. An old man needs a love story. All right. Listen, here are two lovers. See them? No. OK, here's Percival. Yes, something moved there, Irv, uh, just, just there. Percival of Bombay. Yes, he's taking shape. Um, maybe wipe Bombay, another Bail Puri blockbuster, and I'll puke. Percival of Cal. You mean Kolkata? <laughs> some puke some stuff there, Irv. Cal, not Kol. Percy's an Anglo. Free school, no rope trick, no arsenic. In love with, let me see, a parky. I like this game, Irv. Well, don't tell the saint about it. OK, let's see. Visa problems. She's stuck there, he's stuck here. Karachi, Cal. They've just had one night together at a conference in uh, Seoul. Now, they're sure this is it. She needs a name, Irv. Patience. An Anglo, too. Oh, no. We'll make her a Parsi. Percy's Parsi. We'll call her Nas. Nice name, Nas. A crush from Delhi University days, sir. Um, sir, uh, so, Percy, Nas, we have to get them together. His application's turned down 20 times. Percy decides the only way is what? Easy peasy, Irv. He can walk across. Yes, sir. But he could get lost. He needs a guide. Someone who's been that way, done the route. That could be me, Herf. Majesty. <clears throat> well, thank you. And thank you also not for not giving away the conclusion to that episode, exactly how Percy manages to get across the border. That's just uh, the start of the that's story. That's just the start of the story. Now, I've been told by the organizers that I'm not allowed to take any questions from the audience because uh, Alan has another session and all the questions can be taken there. But if the organizers permit, maybe we could take two questions. Just one. One question <laughs> from... Yes, a lot of pressure, a lot rides on that one question uh, because uh, you can, you know, ask now or forever hold your peace. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for reciting your wonderful poetry. Just one question, very basic question. There were many emperors of India, like Asoka, Chandragupta Maurya, many. Why did you choose Akbar and his historiography? Means what led you to choose Akbar and his uh, means time to portray uh, your poetries? That's my question. Well, the Trotter Nama is a Nama. 
Okay, that was my first novel. And the Nama form virtually fell into my lap, right? I was looking for some way, some kind of form which would be rooted here in this soil, okay? Because the novel is a, a European form, largely, okay? So somehow if we're going to make a literature that belongs here, we can't be writing sort of vapid imitations. We have to put down roots here. And that was the beginning of, you could say, a, a romance with Akbar, and it followed up here. My next book goes much further back, but I won't say where, to another king. Um, can we just have the last slide, please? I want to leave the picture there so that you can re uh, there. This is called, and this was painted just a few decades after Akbar died. This is called Krishna showing the Eid moon to his friends. Uh, thank you so much. I, my last question was going to be about Alan's next book. He has given us an indication of the direction, uh, if not the form or the actual content uh, that his imagination is going to uh, progress in. And uh, it's a wonderful image to be left with at the conclusion of this session. I'd like to thank Alan Seeley again and to thank you all for your attention and your patience and for asking only one question. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.